October 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Lamentations Chapter 2 from the Old Testament. Alas, the Lord has covered daughter Zion with his anger. He has thrown down the splendor of Israel from heaven to earth. He did not protect his temple when he displayed his anger. The Lord destroyed mercilessly all the homes of Jacob's descendants. In his anger, he tore down the fortified cities of daughter Judah. He knocked to the ground and humiliated the kingdom and its rulers. In fierce anger, he destroyed the whole army of Israel. He withdrew his right hand as the enemy attacked. He was like a raging fire in the land of Jacob. It consumed everything around it. He prepared his bow like an enemy. His right hand was ready to shoot. Like a foe, he killed everyone even our strong young men. He has poured out his anger like fire on the tent of daughter Zion. The Lord, like an enemy, destroyed Israel. He destroyed all her palaces. He ruined her fortified cities. He made everyone in daughter Judah mourn and lament. He destroyed his temple as if it were a vineyard. He destroyed his appointed meeting place. The Lord has made those in Zion forget both the festivals and the Sabbaths. In his fierce anger, he has spurned both king and priest. The Lord rejected his altar and abhorred his temple. He handed over to the enemy her palace walls. The enemy shouted in the Lord's temple as if it were a feast day. The Lord was determined to tear down daughter Zion's wall. He prepared to knock it down. He did not withdraw his hand from destroying he made the ramparts and fortified walls lament. Together they mourn their ruin. Her city gates have fallen to the ground. He smashed to bits the bars that lock her gates. Her king and princes were taken into exile. There is no more guidance available. As for her prophets, they no longer receive a vision from the Lord. The elders of daughter Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dirt on their heads. They have dressed in sackcloth. Jerusalem's young women stare down at the ground. My eyes are worn out from weeping. My stomach is in knots. My heart is poured out on the ground due to the destruction of my helpless people. Children and infants faint in the town squares. Children say to their mothers, where are food and drink? They faint like a wounded warrior in the city squares. They die slowly in their mother's arms. With what can I equate you? To what can I compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you so that I might comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? Your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets saw visions for you that were worthless lies. They failed to expose your sin so as to restore your fortunes. They saw oracles for you that were worthless lies. All who passed by on the road clapped their hands to mock you. They sneered and shook their heads at daughter Jerusalem. Ha! Is this the city they called the perfection of beauty? The source of joy of the whole earth? All your enemies gloated over you. They sneered and gnashed their teeth. They said, we have destroyed her. Ha! We have waited a long time for this day. We have lived to see it. The Lord has done what he planned. He has fulfilled his promise that he threatened long ago. He has overthrown you without mercy and has enabled the enemy to gloat over you. He has exalted your adversary's power. Cry out from your heart to the Lord, O wall of daughter Zion. May your tears flow like a river all day and all night long. Do not rest. Do not let your tears stop. Get up, cry out in the night. When the night watches start, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for your children's lives. They are fainting at every street corner. Look, O Lord, consider whom have you ever afflicted like this? Should women eat their offspring, their healthy infants? Should priest and prophet be killed in the Lord's sanctuary? The young boys and old men lie dead on the ground in the streets. My young women and my young men have fallen by the sword. You killed them when you were angry. You slaughtered them without mercy. 
As if it were a feast day, you call enemies to terrify me on every side. On the day of the Lord's anger, no one escaped or survived. My enemy has finished off those healthy infants whom I bore and raised. God, the psalmist in Lamentations is so much like me and how I process things. This year and last year have been two incredible, well, the last three years have been incredibly difficult years. And I only use the word difficult because I don't really have a better word for it right now. I know you have a plan for my life, but those were difficult times. I just, I can't be more honest and transparent than that. Uh, things that most people in their lives shouldn't have to experience. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> And you know that I have struggled with a lot of things these last couple of years, including my frustration in a relationship with you. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people want to hear that, you know, a relationship with God is just always on solid ground and just always like big and enveloping. And it's not that my relationship with you ever went away, but like all healthy relationships, you go through situations. It's you didn't go through a situation I did in the, in the relationship and I, I really struggled with some things and and you and I both know in all honesty I'm still struggling with some of those things but I can feel this strength and the strength can only come from you obviously and I, and I give you all the thanks and gratitude for that and honor but I feel this strength finally starting to come back to our relationship <laughs> and listening to lamentations where this person is really far away from you and, and uh, knowing that they've done some really bad things and now they're trying to figure out how to come back to you and in this particular chapter is sort of this stunned realization it almost reads a little bit like we hear the nightly news right uh, this has really happened. I can't believe they actually did this. And so this person's talking about, I can't believe God actually followed through. He said, if you don't stop doing this, I'm going to do this. And he did this. And now I'm kind of stunned. And you can even hear a little bit of um, a bratty tone in there. Uh, still trying a little bit to put it on you, God. Like he didn't quit. Uh, he had no pity on us. Uh, he went ahead, but you had full rights to do everything that you did uh, in this situation, obviously. Um, but I think about my own life and how as we go through kind of these steps of renewal and restoration, we also go through this step of, shoot, I got myself in this situation. And sometimes for us, it's the word again. Sometimes I got myself in the situation again. And and the punishment came and why do I act so surprised every time the punishment comes and, and why do I act surprised that there's a punishment if if God really truly loves me as much as he said he does shouldn't there be a punishment so it's amazing God that I go through something similar not on such a grand scale as the devastation of entire nations although that could be <laughs> some of the stuff that's happening in our world right now um, but on my own of of this kind of stunned realization of two things. Shoot, I really, really messed up. Two, holy cow, I'm being disciplined for it. And I'm still kind of in that grumpy attitude problem, right? My heart isn't completely set right. And we talked a lot yesterday about, um, in the last couple of weeks actually, about having your heart set right. And the only way we can go back into, into restored or restoration and renewal in a relationship with you in any relationship is repenting of what we've done wrong and humbling ourselves before you and and just realizing that we need to accept the consequences we need to realize that we completely more so than we ever realized deserve the consequences and then we need to move on from there and not sit in this kind of grumpy attitude problem but really set our hearts new again in this obedience in this path for you god i know as we go through these next couple of chapters of lamentations you will convict my heart even more but i do stop and thank you today for just that pure feeling of strength i can feel coming back 
I honestly didn't know if I was going to be allowed to have that again. If that was part of the punishment I was going through. I wasn't sure. And so to know that I'll probably deal with the discipline part for the rest of my life. But to just to know that that strength is coming back. And you're allowing me to do just amazing things for your kingdom. And, and help other people, um, Christian and non-Christians who are struggling with things. Even when I don't have my act together, God, it's just crazy awesome why you created us, how you created us, and, and your plan for us. Again, I'm kind of in that swirling mist, midst of I don't understand completely everything that's happened <clears throat> in the last three years. Some of it I'm still really angry about, and, and I know that I'm still going to have to continue to work through some of those those things. But for everything else, there seems to be forgiveness happening and calmness starting to take place. And there's not this swirling drama that's continuing to settle into my heart every couple of hours. God, I just, I just honor and glorify you with that strength that you've given me and, and completely want to use it to whatever you need me to use it for in your kingdom. You are powerful. You are consistent. You are grace-filled. And I am always stunned at how much you love us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.